attention. G'day guys, it's Miles from Supershock here. Welcome back to part two of our mini series. We're here today and we're gonna be installing the Supershock XL controlled suspension. We're at the Supershock machine shop and we've got a flat bit of ground. We're replicating your garage and we're gonna show you just how easy it is to install this kit with just some basic hand tools. In the box, you get two rear dampers, two front dampers, four high tensile bolts for rear camber adjustment, and two C-spanners for spring perch adjustment. In terms of tools for the install, we have a socket set, we have Allen keys, we have a torque wrench, a ratchet, and a breaker bar. It might also be wise to grab some spanners as well. To jack the car up, we've obviously got the trolley jack you can see behind me, and you can either use two or four jack stands. To start off, we'll be loosening the wheel nuts, so you need your vehicle in gear, handbrake on, and you need your breaker bar. As always, safety is paramount when we're lifting a car to work on it. Make sure you've got a rated jack and jack stance. Your wheels that are touching the ground are chopped and you're lifting from a sensible jacking point. We're jacking from the front cross member just behind the front toe point here. Now that I've got it up, we'll be placing the jack stand. So there's two spots you can do this. You can do it on the main chassis rail or you can do it on the sill. I'd be careful about doing the seal though, more often than not, especially on these cars, you catch them rounded off. So we're going to opt for the chassis option. You gently lower the car onto the jack stands. It's always a good idea to put these wheels under the car, just an extra layer of safety. To remove the old suspension, the first thing you want to do is remove any existing brake line bracketry. You will then want to take on the lower strut foot bolts. We're going to be supporting the hub to avoid any overstretching of the CVs when the existing coilover is removed. The final step for removing the existing coilovers is just to remove the top three bolts. So when removing parts from cars, even if we're not going to be putting them back in, it's just good standard practice to put all of your nuts and bolts back on where they belong and uh, just keep your work area nice and tight. When it comes to installing the new Supershock dampers in your Excel, the good news is Supershock has done a lot of the hard work for you already. The spring purchase have been preset for you and the damping setting has been set to six both front and rear, which is what we recommend. When we're talking about a damper setting of six, what we mean is the damper has been wound all the way clockwise to its hardest setting. It then gets wound back six detents and you can feel them as physical clicks through your fingers. We do this because it's the most reliable data. I find it easiest if you put the top in first and put a couple of nuts on, and that way you're keeping the top captive. With the coil over suspended by the top mount, we can then offer up the hub to the lower mount. Now we're using the existing bolts and that's perfectly okay to do so for the front, provided you've done an inspection and they're all in good condition. The trick when installing the suspension on the front end of the XLs is to nip up the lower strut foot bolts and then push in the hub and ensure it's seated correctly before you torque it. That way when you're bouncing off the curves out on the track, it won't walk and change your alignment. The torque spec for the lower strut foot bolts is 140 newton meters. Now we've completed the suspension install on the front end, it's time to tackle the rear. As you can see, we've lifted up the rear end from the rear cross member, and it's important to note at this point that we want to space those jack stands apart as far as we can within reason. So we've chosen to place the jack stands just in front of the trailing arms on a flat piece of the chassis. So the Hyundai XL is a McPherson strut vehicle, both front and rear, which means the process is exactly the same. We'll take off the rear wheels and then we'll get to taking out the old suspension. Much like the front, I like to do exactly the same thing when I'm installing the rears. I'll suspend it with a couple of nuts from the top and then I'll go ahead and bolt in the bottom foot. This is where the rear differs a little bit from the front in that we're adjusting camera from the strut foot instead of the strut top. 
What I like to do is nip up the top bolts and then we're going to torque the bottom bolt to 40 newton meters and just nip up the rear strut boot bolt. What that allows us to do is adjust the camber angle without it slipping back and forth. If you've got a camber gauge or a digital angle gauge, now's the time to get that out. And if you don't have one, I'd highly suggest investing in one, but there are alternative methods. You can use a spirit level and do a little bit of trigonometry, or you can download something like a trusty phone app and get you a bit of a ballpark figure. So we're gonna do that today. We're gonna to be aiming for negative three degrees of camber. And once we've achieved that target, we're gonna be talking up the bolts to 160 Newton meters. In the next video, we'll show you how to fine tune the wheel line. How easy was that? We've completed the entire install with nothing but bare basics tools and we've made an effort to use absolutely no specialty tools of our own on what could well be your mum's driveway. So in the next video, we're gonna be doing setup and showing you how to get the absolute most out of the Supershock Control Series package. We'll catch you there. From the jungle, up in the trees I got a few tricks up in the sleeve One wrong move, I'ma let out the, let out the